Welcome back to the unofficial guide to NDI. We're almost halfway through the book and we're about to take a look at NDI in use with OBS. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software and it is the world's most popular free and open source live streaming video production software. Through a plugin, which we'll take a look at, you can enable NDI in and out puts for video through a variety of methods that you'll learn in this video. Let's take a look. So here with OBS, um, we are going through the technologies that are available to make OBS work. And I wanted to mention that we've already kind of gone through what is NDI, what is the popular software, which OBS was mentioned in, what is a local area network and what are the type of bandwidth considerations that you should be making when you're setting up an NDI production? At this point, we can really start to look at some of the software solutions available to use NDI and make it real in a video production scenario. I wanted to mention that I did write a companion book called The Unofficial Guide to OBS, where you can get a really good grasp of how to use OBS. And that book is also available for free. So it's becoming part of a series, these unofficial guides. Now, as we look closer into OBS, um, OBS, just so you guys know, is a, it's an open source project. It's become very powerful over the years. And via a plugin, OBS is able to bring NDI video in and out. And plugins are basically... Uh, of the ability to add additional functionality to the core OBS project by downloading this plugin. And it's very easy to do, and we're going to show you how that works today. Now, once the plugin is enabled, you're going to find NDI available as an input, so as a source into OBS to bring in NDI video sources. You'll also see a couple different options for getting video out of OBS. And OBS is a great software for mixing together video and audio and overlays and different media assets into a lively production, which can include a lot of different media, and then outputting that video directly to another video source or system inside of the NDI ecosystem. <coughs> So a couple different simple use cases that I'd like to cover as we dig directly into OBS. One simple one is just using, getting video into your streaming and production computer via NDI. So using that NDI input, which we'll show in a moment here. Maybe you have someone playing video games. Maybe it's an eSports streaming application. Well, you can bring in that high quality video using screen capture, NDI screen capture, which we've talked about. Maybe you're using OBS on two computers. Um, you can now do that using your local area network. Another cool option, which I'll show really quickly, is the uh, wireless smartphone. So here's my smartphone here. You can see I'm bringing NDI video into our production. And just to give you a little behind the scenes look here, we've got a little i7 computer, which I'm going to be showing running uh, OBS in a moment here. That's my presentation that is have as a screen capture over to our main production over here, which is where you'll see uh, Brian producing our show. That's my confidence monitor. And then over here, we have another Windows computer on the local area network. And what I'm going to show in a moment here is this is NDI Studio Monitor, which you guys are familiar with at this point. We'll go into a deep dive later on in the production. I will output video from OBS in this computer over to another computer as an example inside of this production. But what I'll also do is I will bring the video from this smartphone into OBS because that is a cool way to bring a wireless camera into OBS. Again, OBS being one of the most popular live streaming software solutions in the world. Now, OBS also has the ability to have dedicated NDI outputs. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, you can take your entire production in OBS and have it available as an output via NDI on the local area network. You can also output the preview 
monitor so you can have OBS run in a studio mode. I'll show this really quickly here where we have a left preview screen and a right output screen. Both of those can be selected to be available as NDI outputs. But taking it a step further, any source inside of OBS can be selected as an NDI output using what's called a filter. And filters inside OBS can be added. Maybe it's similar to think about it like a, a Snapchat filter or Instagram filter or Facebook filter. It's a feature that's added on top of an, a source inside of OBS, which enhances it. And we'll take a look at that, but it's really nice because then any webcam, any video source, any stream, anything in OBS can be set up as an NDI output. You can name that output and continue to manipulate it throughout OBS. So before we get to the key takeaways, let's open up OBS and looky here. OBS 27 is now available. Uh, OBS has done a lot of great things uh, in the past, and this is just an example of what you're going to see. Constantly improving production software that's totally free, and I'm going to show a couple things here inside of OBS. Now, one thing I want to show really quickly, I have this set up. Here is my smartphone that is running uh, OBS. Uh, or sorry, is running NDI webcam. I'm just going to put it down here for a second. Got a little stabilizer there we might decide to use today. But down here, this video feed, this is an NDI video stream. And we're going to add an NDI video stream into OBS so that you can see that. This is an NDI stream. It's very low latency. And, and that's, that's the incredible part. When you add a source into OBS, first of all, OBS is going to automatically discover all of the NDI sources on your network. That's what makes it so easy to use. It's also why it's important, as you'll learn throughout this course, to label all of the inputs. You can see we have like front studio, 30x studio, ceiling camera, which I have selected now. And it shows up with the channel and the IP address. Now, we haven't talked too much about this, but channel one is essentially the first channel of NDI video available from this specific device. Some devices have the ability to output multiple channels of video. So you choose the device that you want to connect to, and you have an option to choose the highest bandwidth, the lowest bandwidth, and audio only. Um, you can allow for hardware acceleration if that's available on your computer. And you can also choose some of the sync options. And what that is, is it allows the device itself, if you choose source timing, to report the timestamps for each frame of video, or you can have the network do that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in an upcoming video. But that is essentially what happens when we're adding video here. You can add an NDI source. It just shows up with a little plus button in sources. And the way OBS is set up is essentially there's scenes on the, the right-hand side where you can create cool little scenes. And then there are sources inside of each scene. Now, one thing I also did was I set up an RTSP video stream as well. That's this one on the top. You can see how much additional latency there is on the RTSP stream. When we're doing live video production, we want everything to be in sync. And that's where NDI really comes into play here. You can see it's seconds faster than the RTSP stream. So I wanted to show that. How do RTSP streams work? Well, again, it's just the source, just like NDI is inside of OBS. But as you can see, NDI is uh, much superior in quality and bandwidth. OK, so we talked about NDI inputs. Now, another NDI input, it's going to create one more source. We'll call this the wireless camera. So, or I, put, I wrote wireless cable, but you guys get it. We'll type in NDI camera. And this is a Wi-Fi camera coming in via Wi-Fi. And this is going to show up as iPhone, NDI HX camera. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, this is the video from my camera that we were just looking at, right? So you might even be able to see this a little better right here. In fact, if we go ahead and add an NDI source, and we add the NDI camera to this production. This will actually make it really easy to see here how it works. So we just got a couple different things going on here. 
this video in the top right is the video from the phone. Okay, just to show you the couple different options for NDI inputs, and then also show you an alternative, um, you know, RTSP and why why that is kind of inferior in a lot of ways. Now that we've done that, uh, we can go to tools and we can look at NDI outputs. And these, this is the easiest way to get NDI out of your system. Now we can give this a name, and OBS is fine for this scenario, but you can name it whatever you'd like, and it will be output in your, um, on your network. You may want to also have a preview. So again, what is the preview? Well, in studio mode, there's a preview mode and a program mode, and they might be different. And OBS will just automatically send both of those out for uh, availability on your NDI output setup. So that's the easy way. What if you have something else? What if you have an RTSP video feed, you don't have an NDI camera, but you want to output that specific source as NDI? Well, that is where the dedicated NDI output comes into play here. So let's take a peek at these two effects. Here's the effect here. Dedicated NDI output. We get to name it. And now whatever NDI source that we have chosen to use will be available. So we'll go ahead and call that the dedicated NDI output. Close it. And now it's available on our network. Now I'm going to switch to my Wi-Fi camera here and I'm going to take you over to our uh, OB, an OBS system over here. So th oh, this is a, the NDI monitor over here. What we're going to do, I've got a little mouse here. I'm going to click NDI Studio Monitor. And we are going to see the NDI outputs from this computer. So what's the first thing we're seeing here is the computer name. The second thing that's nested are the NDI outputs that are available from that computer. So a lot of times NDI will output, that's looking a little crazy, so I'm gonna move back. But if there's multiple video outputs, so from this computer we have a screen capture, we have the output of OBS and a dedicated output of OBS, it nests nicely inside of Studio Monitor. All right, we have shown how OBS works with NDI in this course. Let's talk a little bit about the key takeaways. First of all, OBS is totally free. So if you're looking for a way to design and create a really awesome, complex, dynamic, fun, creative, NDI video output to display on a projector or on a screen or into another production, OBS might be the tool for you. The project is supported by a large community of developers. So that's why it's become so, has so many great features and it continues to grow and it's really become the most popular free live streaming software available today. There is a plugin available for OBS. The only thing we didn't do today is we did not install that plugin. The plugin can be found easily via Google by searching for NDI plugin for OBS. The plugin has is a place in the OBS forums. And on those forums, you can ask questions and talk about it and download it. There's an installer for both Windows and Mac and Linux. So whether you're using any of those systems, you can use OBS and NDI with it. And because NDI and OBS are both free, they've become a really great solution for video productions around the world. Quick note on OBS versus NDI. OBS is free and open source. NDI is free, but it's also royalty free. It's not open source. And that is why a plugin will always likely be required to use NDI with OBS because NDI itself is not open source. Everything inside of OBS is open source. So little technical hoops to get it all working, but it works great. The next video in our series, we're going to be looking at vMix, which has an interesting implementation of NDI as well. And then again, the unofficial guide to OBS, take a look. I spent a lot of time developing this over many years, and it's a great solution you can use to get jump started on your next video production project. All right, I'll see you in the next video.